and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And today we have something regal, fast, luxurious, but also pretty damn cool too. one of those names up there on the list with Rolls-Royce and more recently Maybach as being a car renowned for luxury and speed. In fact, their first car went into production in 1919. In fact, W.O. Bentley, the founder of Bentley, was quoted as saying he wanted to create a fast car, a good car, the best in its class. Well, did he succeed? Bentley has often been seen as the car chasing Rolls-Royce, but others feel it's actually the other way around, that Bentley surpasses Rolls-Royce in quality and engineering. Bentley has been part of the VAG, or Volkswagen Audi Group, since 1998, and they are indeed class leaders. Well, this Bentley not only ticks the luxury box, but also the performance box, because it has a top speed of 202 miles an hour. I introduce to you the Bentley Continental GT Speed Twin Turbo W12. the wheel of this car it's like a mixture of grandness and chasing the inner child or chasing the inner chaff whichever works but you certainly feel as though you're in a luxury motor I mean this is very grand the only niggle I have is that this center console has a bit of a VW feel about it and it just doesn't feel very Bentley the switches are a bit VW Phaeton or VW Audi, yeah, it's just not Bentley. The rest is nice, you've got the wood, you've got the little clock in there with the Breitling symbol, uh, all the little functions, multifunction steering wheel, a lovely clock display here, but it's just this centre console and the buttons surrounding it just lets it down as far as I'm concerned. Once you get used to it, it's all quite easy. Multifunction steering wheel where you can use your cruise control and your stereo up and down and your telephone which is in there by the way. And it just all feels very luxurious. Very nice. It's a great position. You can obviously adjust the seats up and down, front and back of course. But I just, I don't know, I feel as though I've got a lot of power at my fingertips. 6 litre W12 of course as we know but if I want to I can drive serenely and carefully and 
lap up everything around me through these masses of glass everywhere. Great to look out front, side, nothing is intrusive. These pillars do not get in the way whatsoever. But if I also want to, I can release the inner child and put my foot down, as I will demonstrate in a moment. As I said, everything is nice and serene. You would expect a lovely cruising car. However, when you see two lanes, you think, hmm, do I sit serenely or do I do this? And the roar from that W12 and the power is just phenomenal. <laughs> It really does put a smile on your face and certainly does not lack in thrust, shall we say. But it's not smack you in the back of the neck fast. It's just we're going and we're going to keep going all the way up to 202 miles an hour. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, despite this car not being as bespoke as you might imagine, it does have one trick up its sleeve, and that is when you put it into sport mode, it does this. is absolutely huge even though it's only a two-door it's got four seats now this particular car has been wrapped in white because this year did not come in white but it's been wrapped really well so what powers this beast a piece of plastic but under the piece of plastic and aluminium, there is a six litre W12 twin turbo, which produces 600 brake horsepower and 553 pounds foot of torque, which gives it that naught to 60 of 4.3 seconds. And as mentioned before, a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Very nice. Now that is some awesome performance and it's helped with the six-speed auto and the four-wheel drive system which is obviously why we get that ridiculous launch but there is a downside it weighs 2.3 tons and produces 410 co2s which means the annual road tax is 535 pounds but you're in a bentley so who cares Apparently, on paper, it does 16 miles to the gallon, but we all know what those paper figures are like. But again, who cares? Because it holds 90 litres of fuel. That's nearly twice as much as my 4.6 Mustang, and nearly two and a half times as much as my five-door Mini. Inside, it's not quite as bespoke as you would imagine, especially, like I said before, this centre console. These buttons just look a bit too VW or Audi A6. However, it gets better. I like these little diamond edges on these switches. And of course, you've got your cubby hole for your SIM card and your mobile phone, which is a Bentley one, of course. And then you've got your usual ashtrays and seat warmers and your spoiler up and down and park and sat nav and TV. 
it's just quite nice actually but I don't know I expected more but in the glove box you do have your DVD and sat nav system and in the doors are door pockets but they're not just normal door pockets they open out in a nice sort of bouncy kind of way in the back here the seats are very individual and very figure hugging there's two of them of course not three because you've got this center console and in here you've got your cup holders your ashtray, your individual air vents, and this, which is a little bit awkward to open. You have to push it and jump down here, but then it comes down very slowly. Nice armrest. You've got your windows here. Plenty of headroom for an adult. It's all very nice, and even with the seat down, my knees are touching, but, but the seat is molded in such a way that you've got access for your knees either side of this centre hump here. It's very well designed and still quite easy to see all around. Very nice as a passenger. The only thing I don't like is that when you pull the seats back down again it reminds you it's part of the Volkswagen group because it's a bit golf not Bentley. It is 4.8 metres long 2.1 meters wide and 1.38 meters high with a boot capacity of 370 liters. That's pretty monstrous. But there are a couple of things I really don't like about its design. Now where I love this line down here and then as it sweeps over the wheel arch, really nice. Although Malcolm doesn't like that, thinks that's ugly. I do not like the grill. It's nice looking, but this is a Bentley, and that's plastic. Okay, it does have brakes the size of dinner plates, and these 19-inch wheels are wrapped with 27540 rubber all round. That's pretty massive. It has the subtle twin exhaust that I really quite like, and the boot, as we mentioned, is big enough for your golf clubs, baseball bat, or football boots, whatever sport you're into. However, these rear lights are up for debate. I think they're okay, but a lot of people don't like them. I think the back end is very understated. The focus being this, and that's the important part. So how much does all this luxury cost? Well, brand new, the Continental GT is £137,500. And you can get them for around 25 grand, but to get a good one with decent mileage like this one, which has only done 39,000 miles, this actual car could be yours for just £45,995. And coming down from 137,000 with only 39,000 miles on the clock, with all this luxury, it's pretty good, I think. What do you think? So there we have the Continental GT Speed. Now remember I said before that you can get them for around 25 grand. Well, CMV Automotive have this one for sale at 45,995, but they also have a 2004 model in dark green, looks almost black coming in as well. And that one is gonna be around 25 grand because it's slightly higher on the mileage. So if either of these are your taste, then pop onto their website and have a look or Come down and have a look and take it for a test drive, if you dare, because it is a bit of a monster. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. Please come back next time when we've got a brand new Jaguar F-Pace. In the new year, we've got that lovely Mustang GT350, and we've got more of our Project 400 hybrid. Until then, please drive and ride carefully, but have fun. Oh, don't forget, coming up in a minute 
is our giveaway video, so stay tuned for that. But until then, bye bye. Oh, by the way, if you're up for a bit of a laugh, pop along and have a look at our blooper video as well.